got tender loving care welcome to today's session everyone today's session is um slightly different i'm going to recount to you what i've been up to my most recent ventures and ideas we are going to explore mental health we are a mental health resource um in collaboration in conjunction with education, etc., mental health, physical health, things of that nature. Here at Got Tender Loving Care, we want to build a strong support system internationally. And today's episode is about family. I'll recount to you, I'll share with you <laughs> the journey that is today. Not was today, is today, because the day is um, setting. I Let's move on backwards. I can start from the beginning, or I can start from the end, from now, from the present moment, backwards. Um, or we can start from the beginning and, and present ourselves here. I think um, let's follow storyline structure, so, and then maybe we can get creative with it. But let's start at the foundation, at the basics. So... Um, I've been working and, uh, I am a full-time student. I had class yesterday, so we're beginning the day yesterday. So class, a lot of signing, a lot of learning language, um, and development working full-time in the sense of uh, being a full-time student, um, and my job always being on active working with a big team um but this semester has been very varied i've been able to implement a lot more self-care um there was something that happened in the beginning of the semester where my overload schedule was brought back um so overload means like pass full time um mm -hmm. because my job is a lifestyle i'm constantly working and, and thinking of you know i'm working with real people at a day-to-day -day basis. And um, I am an accessibility specialist. Uh, my my profession deals with mental health, physical health, the sensory um, organs, um, our senses, making sure, you know, transition phases, making sure that those that I, I work with succeed. Um, it isn't only punching a clock in and out. I'm constantly thinking, planning, organizing, because you know, these are real life cases and the majority, if not all of my cases are success stories. So always working, always reading, always becoming better, love of learning. Um, <laughs> here's a story. So yesterday I'm, you know, winding the day down, uh, making sure all of my um, graduate school, master's degree um, assignments are complete and, you know, we're at finals and everything's, you know, up to date. My wife said, find me somewhere in our house cleaning and self-caring working out and says hey I, you know i feel that we should um you know spend some more time together right now i'm feeling you know there's a lot on our schedule vulnerable she used the word vulnerable and i said okay what do you want to do let's you know i acquiesce um I'm, I'm i'm becoming better at becoming a support system like i think of life as we are the stars of our own life right like a movie we're the we're the star and everyone else has a co-star in our life. But sometimes, you know, when these things arise, um, becoming that co-star, right? I, I'm always going to be the star of my, my life. But in this scenario, in the scene, my wife needed my support. So I, I let her guide the show. What do you want to do? Um, I let her lead the way. Um, she wanted to watch something, a movie, a show. Um, and I definitely have my input. And I definitely develop my voice. And she said, oh, let's put on this uh, show called, you know, a baking show, a specific baking show. I won't share what it is unless you reach out and ask, hey, what's that baking show that your wife wanted to watch? So we watched uh, an episode. I wasn't really feeling it. I wasn't really interested. Um, I had her head on my lap. I was you know, rubbing her scalp, giving her an ear and neck massage and, you know, making her feel comfor comforted. Um, one of my love languages is touch. So, um. Then I say, hey, um, do you, what are you in the mood for? Are you still in the mood for his baking show? 
she says, um, well, I can kind of tell that you're not into the show. What would you like to watch? And I said, well, you can put it on. I'm, you know, I, I'm watching it with you. Um, but there's this other show that you might be interested in that I'm really into. She says, okay, um, what is it about? I explained to it. She says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's watch that. That, that seems very, um, very, you know, what I need right now. Um, you know, lighthearted, very, uh, beneficial program. So I put on and I'm going to share what it is because it's a show that, um, has helped me, my mental health. Um, it's, uh, a program. I mean, if you look up M as in mom, D as in dad, space, don't type in space, just, you know, just the space bar on your keyboard, press it. So M D space N as in now, D as in dad, M D N D. And uh, M D N D is a um, doctor, a medical student who works with uh, Vivian McCool, someone who is awesome from Brazil. Um, I appreciate every, you know, what Vivian does. So Vivian McCool has a podcast at, on MDND. Um, there are different segments where MDND goes to different physicians' house or places of work, et cetera, and asks them good questions. So it's a show to get to know different professions, different fields. And since my wife and I are both in education and we work with students who sometimes say, I want to be this, I want to work on that, you know, we want to verse ourselves with familiarity in everything. So it's about being Renaissance, Renaissance man, Renaissance woman. Um, if you don't use those men, women terms, you know, being Renaissance, um, a person of uh, Renaissance, a master of everything. So we're learning about anesthesiology. We're learning about pathology, psychiatric um, professions, surgery, um, things like that, medical. And in a very lighthearted, very fun way. You know, a lot of the um, people were military. Some of the people are still students. Everyone, you know, is a professional. Um, various professions and education and uh, love of learning. So we're watching that. And, you know, then every, today, um, uh, my wife ended up going and giving us beach at a university and I had the baby with me all day um so baby and I go pick up um toddler and young child so now we have three um kids and three kids you know get picked up from school we play once we arrive home I make sure I pick up snacks so and all that um, play some good music, sing in the car, and um, lighthearted. You know they're enjoying the snacks. Um, arrive home. I believe in play and learning. You learn best when you play when you feel that it's not strenuous, or stressful. So, um, here with babies, everyone um wants to eat. So we go up to our uh, second floor where our kitchen is, and we start to eat spaghetti. Uh, that my wife and I made loaded with greens. She asked, Oh, how does it look? How's this? I said, Add more greens. <laughs> Gotta get these kids to eat. Um, have, have vegetables and healthy food. And when I make food, like what I do is I mince the vegetables. Maybe I'll make a cooking video, baking video. I mince the so many vegetables where if I'm making a quesadilla, it feels like you're just eating a ooey gooey cheesy quesadilla. But I've minced up so many vegetables in that that, that you're eating. You say, okay, so a quesadilla is a tortilla, cheese, and you're eating another layer. So there are two layers, and then I add some onions. And I get those as thin, as minced as possible. Um, so our children come up and eat, and then we go back to our first floor. I, we have an educational zone that I'm building with a sensory room, and we're playing, and... I'm, you know, I'm sitting at the, at the side because I'm playing with my children, but I'm also conscientious of my role is, you know, protector, uh, making sure that everyone's playing appropriate and conserving energy so that when we do other activities, I am, you know, I can have bursts of energy. 
Um, so our children are, are playing, and I feel that as a guardian and caretaker, if you are ever finding yourself in this position, um, you know, make sure that kids play well with each other, that if they free play, that they play independently, and also build on language and communication. For example, um, I in I instill language in that I understand that you've been working on language A all day. Now let's work on language B and then language C. So as much language as possible. Always clear communication, love language. Um, when when there's, I have methods of if I feel, I have a voting system. If I feel that you know the kids are about to or not playing as well or as best as they could, then I, um, I I, I challenge the senses. For example, if we have music on or if we have you know television in the background, or if all of that is off, if we have lights on or lights off, I use the senses to get attention. I work on not screaming, not yelling, um, because I don't want them to imitate that. So engaging the senses. I even have a whistle, um, a very specific, I describe it as a whistle, I shouldn't. It's a love tuner, but um, I do have another emergency whistle. If I didn't have my love tuner, this is what my love tuner sounds like. And it's by Deepak Chopra. I want to say Chakra, because Chakra, but Deepak Chopra. And um, I got that because it's a um, an instrument that reduces stress. Uh, it's a very, it's it, it's tuned in the love frequency. And I believe in that. I want to believe in that. And I ended up getting that. I wear it with me. I bring it with me everywhere, um, except the shower because it's made of metal and I don't want it to rust. Um, and sometimes I let the children play whenever they want to de-stress because I do believe in it. I also have an emergency whistle somewhere, like a gym teacher, a PE, physical education teacher. So um, I, it's utilizing the senses and, and no yelling. You know, if you're a parent or guardian, don't yell. Work hard not to yell. Use these tools, all the tools around you. If kids are behaving in a certain way, turn off the light. Um, use a whistle. Um, clap. Uh, snap your fingers. Uh, but not yelling or cursing. And I, what I usually do is I notice that when there are problematic behaviors, I change language. For example, if everyone's behaving a certain way and saying things, this or that in English, um, I, I turn it to Spanish. Okay, well, your English good behavior needs to charge. And now we're going to build on Spanish because a lot of our, my, you know, my children, they don't, they, they, if they know any bad stuff, it's in English, but not Spanish because they hear this, you know, the English language, um, cur and they might hear curse words or phrases from shows at school, other kids, not from, from us. We don't use that language here. And we work hard not to, but they're less exposed to that in, you know, what's a quote unquote foreign language, even though it's not Spanish and English are about equivalent and there's no official language in the United States. Um, so then I, I turn it to ESP mode and our children automatically, oh my good. I, if you have any languages in your, in your family develop that language is so important. It's a sensory uh, thing, communication. Um, it could be Portuguese, it could be um, Chinese, Mandarin, Catalan, French, Irish, anything. Phrases um, in your particular language. Even us, we use like native Taino, Native American indigenous words and phrases as part of our culture. So utilizing culture to our advantage to uplift. So then I get um, you know, our children to play. We do a lot of physical activities and learning and um, I always give the children a chance to go outside if it's you know good weather, even if it's not good weather. Uh, we've been outside in the snow and all that. And then um, finally came upstairs because I needed to put all three babies, all three kids, you know, to sleep. So get some of the kid, you know, shower, wash off. While they do that, they have the system um, where we've trained them. No one's gonna drown in in the bathtub that we have. So. Um, put on a show in the background to bathe themselves or they listen to music and I get a baby to sleep. And oh my goodness, baby was taking a while. So I use um, just the tools around us.
Um, you may hear like sensory sounds on these podcasts, like because there's a sensory sound somewhere in this house. I, sometimes I even create it, you know. Um, I I have a background in music and DJing. Um, I've performed all over the world, so I've thought of well, what could benefit my family? And sometimes I create these sounds. Sometimes I go outside and I record. And I bring back those sounds from the birds chirping to a natural waterfall. And I play it in the background um, just to get everyone calm, relaxed. I even do that with shows. Put on a show for, for kids. If I feel like they're watching something like too hyper, then I you know I use ASMR approaches where, okay, everyone, we need to calm down. So I'm going to put on calming music or a calming video. And then, um, so I got baby to sleep. Then I go make sure that toddler one was still awake is tucked in and then uh young child is, was already sleeping and um that's where i'm coming to you now so i had a very 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 um uh, beneficial a very rewarding and also very exhausting day um i'm a tea drinker um but my tea has been or is um caffeinated now more than ever um, and I'm drinking water, and I, it's not unhealthy amounts of caffeine, but from someone who really didn't ever drink, like, coffee caffeine, I was more of a, you know, if I'm going to have any caffeine, it's going to be chai, masala, things like that, to um, just drinking a little bit more, making sure afterward I drink some water. Um, yeah, that's where we're at. If you find yourself in the position of, you know, uh, many responsibilities, I want you to care for yourself, charge yourself and then you can charge you know those around you I, I i believe that cleaning your space cleaning your room cleaning your house is very therapeutic it, uh, it's also a great workout i get my yoga my weightlifting from cleaning my entire house um you can put on a good podcast maybe you're in a part in the world where that's not accessible um you can, if you're a writer, have a notebook next to you and write, you know, your ideas as you clean, uh, as you work out, because because it is a workout. And then your entire space around you is going to be uplifted. You're going to have a very hopeful environment. Um, and look, I understand. I come from humble backgrounds and beginnings. And if you, you know, don't have access to that internet, or music, or podcasts, or audiobooks. Um, another method is record, you know, your ideas and your thoughts, and and then listen to that while you while you work out, while you exercise, while you clean, and and not just clean. It, this isn't just about you know mopping and sweeping. It's about self care. It's about getting to know the space around you, your home, because a house is a house, but a home is a home. And, you know, what I do is I baby-proof everything. I'm cleaning, but I'm also baby-proofing everything. And I, I, I learned that, you know, the hard way, um, the importance of baby-proofing. You know, we had an accident a few years back with a, a can that was in the recycling box. Just a regular can, you know, maybe a can of corn or a can of peas. Um, the, the ones that you use a can opener for. And that was in, in one of the babies grabbed it and you know they, they ended up walk picking it up walking to us and fell on it um and um our cleaning game was strong then um but one of the differences was that now i am more entrepreneurial now i'm more remote i work you know from home and and, and i go off and about whenever needed but i prefer i have a very strong preference for working from home building the home and this was a time when that accident happened this was when I was overload, um, working from home, but also working um, more working like all over the state. I would drive district to district, community to community, school to school, all around my state, all around my city, um, providing services. So there was it was less it was maybe twenty percent remote then, and eighty percent driving all over town going into these different community schools, organizations, learning centers, um, and then coming back home and having to work on all of the paperwork every night, you know, all nighters, and also being a full-time student. 
Um, and then, you know, I don't let things like that slip anymore. Who knew that that would have happened? You know, uh, uh, the recycling bin is over at the other side of the room. And nowadays, I just I put all that stuff. I, I put recycling out almost immediately. And if not, then it's going to be closed behind a door somewhere. And if there are any of those cans, I, I throw those cans away right away. Not those cans, things that can cause accidents. I think forward of what could of what can happen because of what did happen. And my steps are to be preventative. Um, sometimes I'm walking around the house playing with my, you know, kids and, and what I call my students as well, my kids and students. And they follow me. You were playing, we threw the ball. I, I look at what, how they move. I look at where they go. And I study the spaces in our home, in our yard, in our garden. And I think of, okay, that should, you know, feng shui, vatsu. How can that space be better, safer? Um, more lucrative, how can they purport more success? Um, and we missed a bullet on that one, on, on that can accident. And, I, you know, it's more detail, but this story, what I'm sharing with you now, very real perspective, is about self-care. And I know that cleaning your room or your house may not seem like it's self-care, but it's one of the best things you can do because you become familiar with the space around you. Um and you get to own your space. You you feel empowered. And then afterwards, self-care, you know, your body. You're, you're, you're taking care of your spirit when you clean your home. It's a space around you, all the air around you. Um, so I appreciate that. I know that, you know, I, I, I'm outside always gardening and playing. And as far as I know, we live in an okay community. Yeah, it could be better, but I haven't noticed any neighbors outside their house smoking cigarettes. I don't even smell cigarettes like I did back in the, you know, in the cities. The noise pollution, yeah, there is noise pollution, um, but maybe hopefully there's less air pollution. There are, you know, still property crimes, unfortunately, but there are, there's less violence. Um, so even if you have to save your money and move somewhere, I have a, a blog that I started back in, um, back in, my, you know, college. I'm a first generation college graduate um and i think i even started this maybe potentially in high school because i was writing and creating things in high school first it was titled um go where you are celebrated and then it eventually became be where you are celebrated um because you can go places but success is wanting to be somewhere not necessarily go out and about so part two of my blog is be where you're celebrated. Um, so that's it for now. As I charge, as I um, energize myself and self-care, just some tips and perspectives, or some ideas that I wanted to share. And if you need this, God bless. And if you don't, uh, reach out and let me know your ideas regardless. Uh, we have a mini farm here, so I have a lot of work. I'm constantly, I'm always busy. Um, and yeah, I got tender loving care here. Blessings. Thinking of if there's anything else. All right.